team of engineers from New York University has created nanorobots capable of self-replication by connecting DNA fragments. Nextage robots have begun to massively replace humans in manufacturing. Researchers have detected signs of life on Saturn's icy moon Enceladus. Humanity will soon find out if there is life beyond Earth. Engineers at Thalmic Labs have developed a next-generation prosthetic that allows patients to feel touches, pain, and even cold thanks to electrodes implanted in the brain. These and other high-tech news in one video. Kawada Robotics showed its latest collaborative robot Nextage at the recent IREX 2023 Robotics Exhibition in Japan. Nextage is designed to replace humans in monotonous tasks, particularly in manufacturing. According to the manufacturer, the robot can collaborate with humans, other machines, and use specialized tools. The robot's head somewhat resembles a human head, equipped with two cameras and having two degrees of freedom, allowing for the adjustment of its field of vision. The torso features an LED display, and the overall height of the robot can be adjusted depending on the task at hand. The robot's torso weighs only 29 kilograms, while its base is a substantial 130 kilograms. Regarding height, it is adjustable and can reach a maximum of 170 centimeters. Next stage is capable of lifting objects weighing up to 3 kilograms. The robot is designed for use in factories and other production lines. It can be controlled using a tablet with specialized software that can be quickly configured for specific tasks. A team of experts from Johns Hopkins University and researchers from Thalmic Labs has developed a new prosthetic for people with amputated limbs. A 28-year-old paralyzed man has regained a sense of touch through a prosthetic with electrodes directly implanted in the brain. The participant can now control his new hand and feel when it is touched. Johnny became the first patient to test the Mayo-based prosthetic bracelet. Johnny, who suffered from cancer, had his arm amputated due to tumor development. Albert Chi, involved in the prosthetics development, explains that the device, costing no more than $200, significantly simplifies the lives of such patients. Johnny confirms this, stating that the prosthetic has become an extension of his hand, enabling him to perform necessary manipulations like grasping objects or touching them. The device records the patient's muscle activity in the arm and sends this data via Bluetooth to a computer, where it is processed and then transmitted back to the device. Mayo does not require electrode implantation or a special prosthetic installation surgery, making it considerably user-friendly. Nanorobots have the ability to create endless copies of themselves by assembling DNA fragments. Researchers have developed a programmable nanorobot consisting of just four DNA strands. Using ultraviolet light, this tiny robot captures other DNA fragments and joins them together to create new nanomachines, including replicas of itself. A thousand such bots can span the width of a human hair. This technology could be applied to drug and enzyme production. However, some fear that self-replicating nanorobots could lead to an apocalypse. These robots are only 100 nanometers in diameter, and approximately a thousand of them can line up in a line that has a width comparable to a human hair. A team from New York University, the Ningbo Institute of Materials Technology and Engineering, and the Chinese Academy of Sciences claims that their robots surpass previous developments, which could only assemble parts into two-dimensional shapes. However, these robots are not fully autonomous. They operate in response to externally controlled temperature and ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light is required to weld the DNA pieces they assemble. Without precise deliveries of the necessary DNA fragments, they cannot create their own copies. Therefore, the Grey Goo Apocalypse is not an imminent threat to humanity. According to this concept, self-replicating nanobots and similar microorganisms would uncontrollably copy themselves and spread, filling the entire planet and leading to the demise of other life forms. A study has identified a potential source of energy for the emergence of life on Enceladus. Scientists have found hydrogen cyanide on Enceladus, Saturn's icy moon, a key molecule for the origin of life. They also determined that Enceladus's ocean is a powerful source of chemical energy, containing organic compounds capable of sustaining life. The team utilized a detailed statistical analysis of data from the ion and neutral mass spectrometer on the Cassini spacecraft. Although the Cassini mission concluded in 2017, scientists continued to analyze its data on Saturn's moons, including the enigmatic Enceladus. Increasing clues suggest the possibility of life emerging or already existing there. The plume emanating from Enceladus, consisting of ice and vapor, is rich in organic compounds essential for living organisms. Researchers have now revealed the presence of hydrogen cyanide on Enceladus, a molecule important for the origin of life and a universal precursor to amino acids. Many theories about the origin of life, including on Earth, rely on this substance as a starting point. Scientists also discovered that the ocean beneath the icy crust of Saturn's moon contains a potent source of chemical energy. This energy stems from various organic compounds, some of which on Earth serve 
as fuel for life. Importantly, these compounds are present in sufficient quantities. The more energy available, the greater the potential for living organisms to emerge on this moon. Currently, the scientific community is convinced that if life on Enceladus arises in the near future, or has already begun, it will likely occur in its ocean, which is rich in the necessary energy and nutrients for its early inhabitants. The experimental artificial intelligence system BrainGPT promises to restore the ability to communicate to those who have lost it due to paralysis. It does not require surgical intervention, complex cameras, or other equipment. The BrainGPT system, developed by scientists from the University of Sydney, stands out for its simplicity and efficiency compared to others. An EEG cap reads brain signals, which are recorded and analyzed by the D-Wave program trained on data from 29 volunteers. Their task was to read text silently. As a result, the D-Wave algorithm can correlate specific EEG signals with written speech, words, and phrases. When it detects the exact same signal in the user's brain, who is currently not reading anything, the system understands that they thought of the corresponding phrase or word. Currently, the system's effectiveness is about 40% on the BLEU scale, which measures the accuracy of machine translation. Developers aim to increase it to 90%. The company itself stated that this research represents an innovative achievement in the translation of raw EEG waves directly into to language, marking an incredible breakthrough in this field. The new system introduces discrete encoding methods into the process of translating brainwaves into text, representing an innovative approach to neural decoding. Australian developers have decided to create a supercomputer capable of simulating the world's most efficient self-learning machine, a neuromorphic computer performing the same number of synaptic operations per second as the human brain, which is 228 trillion. The digital replica of the human brain that researchers from the Western Sydney University want to create could become the first machine to mimic large-scale pulse or spiking neural networks. These networks are considered the closest to the physiology of the brain among artificial neural networks. According to scientists, the inability of current computer technologies to reproduce the neural networks of the brain, particularly spiking neural networks, hinders the development of computing technology. Previous attempts faced the challenge that digital systems were too slow and consumed too much energy. With the introduction of the Deep South supercomputer, scientists are confident that the situation will change. When it becomes operational, tentatively in April 2024, it will be able to process vast amounts of data at high speeds. Moreover, it will be much more compact than other supercomputers and will consume significantly less energy thanks to spiking neural networks. In addition, Deep South is conceived as a modular system, and its components are easily accessible, allowing the supercomputer to be scaled up or down for various tasks. What do you think about nanorobots that can create endless copies of themselves by connecting DNA fragments? Share your opinion in the comments. We hope you found something new and interesting in this video. If so, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Karo Show channel. Also check out our previous videos. Goodbye.